Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Freedom of speech is currently again a hot topic. I'm receiving messages and comments from people who are against free speech or who have a problem with free speech and who say things to me like, if I insult your mother, is that okay with you? You believe in free speech, right? Or why do you have a problem with insults? Don't you believe in free speech? Or if I come and behead you, isn't that freedom of expression? Or why did you block me? Don't you believe in free speech? All of that is not a big surprise. This usually comes from people who don't properly understand free speech because they don't come from a culture in which free speech is present. In fact, recently a big Muslim apologist even said similar things to me. After insulting my wife and insulting my child, I refused to talk to him and said, hey, I'm not going to have a conversation with you after you do these things. And he then said, but why? Don't you believe in free speech? And that guy claimed to be an expert on political philosophy. So today I want to talk a little bit about free speech to clear some misconceptions. I don't want to go into a deep analysis of what free speech is and what sources it is based on. I just want to give a quick summary of free speech and explain a few facts and a few myths about it. Freedom of speech can be found in many sources today. It is in the American Constitution, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, in constitutions, in laws all across Europe and beyond. You can find arguments for it or defenses of it in Enlightenment philosophers. What it basically is about is that everybody is allowed to express their opinion, to hold certain opinions and to acquire certain information and opinions, and to express those opinions in public without fearing legal retribution or without others having the right to violently interfere in your speech, for example. In a country where there is free speech, I can go out there and criticize the government and criticize people's beliefs and ideas. And the law cannot punish me simply based on my criticism of publicly held beliefs and ideas. People outside cannot attack me or kill me and then get away with it because I expressed an opinion that they disagree with and don't like. If they do so, they will have violated the laws and will be accordingly punished. There are some limits to free speech, depending on where you are, depending on what country we're talking about. Generally, in America, for example, a country in which free speech is very liberal, you can mostly say whatever you want about any idea, any belief, and any group of people. Except you should not incite violence. You should not incite immediate harm. For example, if I talk about how this certain group maybe it doesn't deserve to live and we should do something about it, and then people go and harm that group, then I have incited that crime and that speech is not protected. If I incite people to attack somebody or if I justify the attacking of somebody and then people who listen to me go and attack that person, then I have incited violence. If I threaten people with violence, that is also not protected. If I libel and slander people, then in many cases it may not be protected. In some cases it is. If I promote serious crimes in my speech, such as if I show child pornography, then that is definitely not protected because it contains a serious crime. If I harass people, especially after warnings against their will, and if I expose private information that can put them in danger, that is not protected. Besides clearly illegal actions like these, speech is generally protected. I can say whatever I want, I can express my opinions, I can express my opinions in form of humor or serious writings. My speech itself is not punishable. In certain countries, the conditions may change a little bit. For example, in certain European countries, I can say whatever I want about any religion or belief or idea or a public figure. But if I, for example, excessively dehumanize certain groups of people or downplay violence committed against them or single them out and say stuff like that we should hate them, that they deserve hate and that we should do something about them, then that may not be protected by free speech. But especially if it comes to figures that concern the public, for example, Mohammed, then I am allowed to mock him, to say things about him, to express my opinions about him in a serious or in a comedic way. The logic here is that when I criticize Muhammad and when I mock him, when I satirize him in the most offensive ways, then I am not harming anybody. I am merely criticizing and mocking, attacking an idea, a figure that concerns all of us, that we all may have an opinion on. Some people may hold that figure dear, others may not. That is not comparable, for example, to a private person. I can say whatever I want about Muhammad and I can even make... Uh, 
pretty bad cartoons and sexual implications and very morbid implications. But if I do the same thing about a private person, about a private individual, by showing that person's picture over and over again in public and mentioning them in very harmful ways, then I may get in trouble with the law because the person that I'm doing that to may be in danger and may be deeply disturbed. I may be infringing on their rights of safety. So if I pick a fight with somebody and then start harassing their children and their partners and their family members and posting pictures of them and insulting them in public, then that is harmful and punishable in most countries. If I insult Muhammad, no matter how dear Muslims hold him, and I say, hey, I can do this, this is free speech, then Muslims cannot come back and insult my family members and say, hey, I can insult your family members because that is free speech. It's not the same thing. What matters is not that you hold Muhammad dear and that I hold my family members dear. What matters is that my family members are regular people that are alive right now, that are private individuals that may be harmed. Whereas Muhammad is an individual who concerns everybody who concerns the public, who is not alive, who is merely an idea to us. Besides, to quickly deviate from a discussion on free speech, Muhammad is an individual who concerns the public in more ways than just being known. He concerns the public insofar that he has made statements in the past that concern the public. He is a political religious figure who has started a movement that directly affects other religious groups a figure that has committed certain acts which are under scrutiny normally by other people. That is not comparable to a regular person who is simply related to me. My parents, for example, are not people who have waged war against the world and made statements about the world that concern many people that people follow, whereas Muhammad did. But nevertheless, I have to say, in most cases, and also in my opinion, it is okay under free speech for me to insult Muhammad. And it is okay for others to insult other people or to insult their family members without engaging in targeted harassment and harmful actions. And here I want to come to the distinction of free speech and decency. With these whole Muhammad cartoons, many people think that when we talk about free speech and our right to draw cartoons or to insult and criticize several figures and ideas, people think that we are also implying that free speech means we have the right to mock certain figures and that must also mean that everybody has to like it and that no one can be offended by it. But that's not the case. Yes, I have free speech and I have the right to criticize Islam and to criticize Muhammad and to mock Muhammad. And I am completely aware that many people may find that distasteful because they believe in a religion that includes Muhammad and they may be upset about that. And I cannot claim that they shouldn't be upset because I have free speech. No, they have every right to be upset. Just as I have every right to be upset if other people insult me, say things to me, or insult my family members and relatives or other people. So just because something is allowed under free speech, that doesn't mean that certain thing is not offensive or not indecent. The distinction that should be made here is that while you can be offended by something and express how disgusting you find it, you should simply not try to shut it down and censor it, commit violence against it, or try to incite the laws to punish the person who exercises his right to free speech. So to give an example by making myself the target, you may be allowed to call me a bastard. And yes, you have the right to do that. And I recognize your right to do that. That is free speech. That said, I may not appreciate it and not like it. And I may say, hey, if you are going to talk to me that way, then I'm not going to talk to you. Bye. And I may even block you on social media, for example, because you are allowed to say that certain thing, but that doesn't mean that I cannot be offended by it and that I have to listen to you and talk to you. You can go somewhere else and say whatever you want. I don't care. If I criticize Islam and mock Muhammad, I have a right to do that. That is free speech. It doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. You can simply turn away. You can say, hey, I find this disgusting. And I'll say, okay, fine, I get it. You can walk away. You can block me. That's totally okay. That's all consistent with free speech. The right to say something does not mean that that certain thing must be appreciated by everyone or that that certain thing is good. It simply means you have the right to say 
a certain thing, as long as it doesn't interfere with other people's rights. And among those rights is not the right not to be offended. If people say something offensive, and if most people are offended by it, let them just say it. Let people condemn it. Let people reject it. Let people shun that person. Don't forbid it. Don't silence it. It won't solve anything. That opinion will not go away. It will always be there. It will come back. It may even come back in much worse ways. Just allow it to happen. Society is smart enough to, in the long run, distinguish between good things and bad things. And that is the entire point of free speech. Seriously, if people were not allowed to say certain things that offend the public, that are offensive to many people, that are offensive to you, then it wouldn't be called free speech. Then what would be the point of free speech? If that is not allowed, then what should be allowed under free speech? If free speech only means that you can say a limited number of things that don't offend anybody and that don't question the forces in power, then there is no point to call it free speech then that is just speech. It is not really free. If you cannot say, this is wrong, that religion is false, this idea is bad, this historical figure and that religious figure are dumb, then that is not free speech. That is restricted speech and contrary to the whole idea of free speech. Because under free speech, people should be allowed to express true statements and false statements and half true and half false statements in whatever way they like so that people can figure out what is true and what is false and no one should be in a position of authority to decide what is true and what is false because if you give the state or a group of people the authority to decide what is right and what is false and what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed to say then you may just end up in a state where those in power oppress the people and restrict them from pointing out what is right and what is wrong. And that goes against the entire idea of democracy, of liberty, of liberalism, of freedom of speech. Oh, one more thing. As mentioned, freedom of speech does not mean that people have to listen to you and give you a platform. It doesn't mean that I have to listen to you, that I cannot just block you off. It also doesn't mean that private institutions, for example, have to listen to you and deal with you and give you a stage. If I own a stage, for example, and you want to come and speak there, and that stage belongs to me, it is my private property, and if I really do not like what you want to speak on that stage, if I find it really repulsive, really disgusting, then I can just decide that I don't want to let you speak there because I find your ideas repulsive and disgusting. But hey, you are free to go and speak your opinions somewhere else. And I cannot prevent you from doing that. That is free speech. I am just not obligated to give you my stage to express the opinions that you have a right to express. That is free speech. So, I have the right to mock Mohammed. Just because I have the right, that doesn't mean that you have to agree that this is a good thing. It doesn't mean that you cannot be offended by my mockery. But it also doesn't mean that you can violate my rights by coming and committing violent acts against me. Then you will be guilty. You have a right to insult me. I have a right to be upset about that. I have a right to turn away. I don't have a right to take your freedom to insult me away. You can feel and say whatever you want about me as long as it does not interfere with my rights and doesn't contain anything terribly illegal. But I don't have to listen to you. You are free to express your thoughts wherever you want to. I don't know why I'm counting. I don't know what I'm counting up to. Whatever. You get the point. This was just my humble input to that because I'm getting so many messages and comments about this stuff. I hope it was clear. And correct me and add to it if you think that, uh, I have missed anything or I have miscommunicated anything. Thanks for watching. I will be back. Have a fantastic day. And I have the right to say it. Stay away from Islam.